Robinson. And good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Now, you've, you've been watching intently how this thing works, so 10 minutes. Um, and submission number 150. Thank you. So I'll kick, kick you off, uh, and as I say, welcome. Good evening, Chairman Wilson, councillors and members of the public. Thank you for this opportunity to have my say regarding the long-term budgets and the proposed $36.9 million purchase of water from the RWSS. Firstly, let me state I fully understand the RWSS will proceed, and soon, despite numerous sources proving that it is not viable either financially, environmentally, geologically, socially or hydrologically. It will proceed because it's politically expedient. Because of my employment background, I have skills that may assist this council in understanding some of the financial implications of the scheme. My first employment was as a draftsman for the then Lands and Survey Department in Napier. I learnt about maps and their limitations. In 1977, I began employment with the New Zealand Metrological Service. I learnt to read all types of metrological instrumentation and collect and report weather data. This gives me an excellent understanding of rainfall and what causes it. Moved forward to 1987 and I began a nearly nine year period of employment with the Inland Revenue Department, Auckland CBD office. Most of that time as an investigator on the audit program, I prepared evidence for and represented IRD in court cases. So to summarise that sample of my employment history, I understand maps, weather, legislation, and can prepare a court case. Now to the matter at hand. On 18 April 2016, I sought clarification from the Office of the Auditor General regarding the legality of the Council's proposed purchase of $36.9 million worth of water, being mindful of the fact that the OAG can only provide recommendations. I understand from Tony Appleyard a sector manager from OAG that he has visited the council and discussed this matter, among other things. Unfortunately, I have yet to receive any advice from that office. This consultation process is also about budgets. Any competent accountant will tell you that off balance sheet factors, such as liabilities, can and do distort the actual position of any enterprise. So my key point number one is, it is my contention that significant issues relating to the RWSS mean that the figures suggested in the LTP amendments budgets, pages 7 to 9, range between overly optimistic to outrightly fallacious as a result of pending liabilities. As I have explained in the notes you have been provided with this evening, I carried out an investigation into the claims made for the available water from the scheme. I am more than happy to sit down with you and all your staff and explain how I arrived at my conclusions at a time and place convenient to us both. One condition, that I have written permission from HBRC to copy one of your rainfall maps because I will need to show you that map in any discussions and that map is subject to your copyright. During my research I discovered that this council has already been advised of the discrepancy between the claim of 200 million cubic metres of water from the dam and the amount realistically indicated in the available data from David Painter's peer review and the evidence of Dr Zemanski. I understand Mr Barry Riddler has pointed out the reality to the Council, or this reality to the Council previously, along with other pertinent and well-researched information in his submission as part of the Tuki Tuki Choices consultation in 2012. So my key point number two, there's not enough water in the dam catchment on average annually to meet the amount of water claimed to be available. 
Just, just reluctantly, I bring this up, but we, we sort of assuming the dam went ahead and assuming there was enough water available, we, we want some advice on environmental flows. Should we be doing it or not? Pretty much it. I mean, we can go back and relitigate the dam, will it fill, all right. that sort of stuff. It's not particularly helpful to us making a decision on the variation. So I, I reluctantly chip in there, but just so you understand where we're coming from, maybe we didn't ask the, ask the question well enough, but it's not about relitigating the dam process. Uh, and I'm not about relitigating it either, and well, thank you for your point, Chairman Wilson. My key point number three is that the $36.9 million payment cannot be for environmental purposes for the reasons explained in my notes and in the submission you have already received. It therefore appears to be a subsidy to HBRIC or a guarantee by stealth of income for potential corporate investors. In a report prepared by Engineering Geology Limited for Tonkin and Taylor Limited, under the heading 2.3, Site Selection, appeared the first statement, there are no ideal dam sites in the project area. One wonders what part of no, HBRC and HBRIC don't understand. So my key point number four is, to reduce the financial burden on ratepayers, should the dam actually fail, then I recommend that HBRC explore the possibilities offered by natural catastrophe insurance products, assuming that they would be available given the high risk nature of the area. The loss of the Port of Napier is a real possibility. Despite verbal assurances to the contrary from various councillors and staff of HBRIC, or, uh, I'm sorry, HBRC, there is clear written evidence that the port is seriously at risk of being sold. So my key point number four, to provide certainty the rate pa to the ratepayers of Hawke's Bay that the verbal assurances from HBRC have some validity, then I request that HBRC amend the constitution of HBRIC in the following ways. Number one, remove the specific approval already given in writing to HBRIC to part sell the port, that's clause 1.3D, and number two... Mr Chairman, that's just not true. It, look at the constitution. And two, insert a new clause requiring a majority approval of ratepayers through a binding referendum to partially or fully sell the port. There is a fundamental conflict of interest with HBRC being both the promoter and the regulator of the scheme. A number of people have raised that point. There is anecdotal evidence that water user agreements are being seen as a licence to pollute by some of those signing up to the scheme. So my key point number six is how can HBRC be considered as capable of successfully prosecuting excessive nitrogen runoff situations when it can be shown to have directly contributed to the problem. I also raise concern regarding the approval for HBRIC Limited to, and I quote, be able to borrow for working capital including to enable it to fund dividend payments to council in the event of a shortfall in the dividends paid to HBRIC Limited by Port of Napier and by the RWLP if that proceeds. Does Council seriously consider these dividends paid from borrowed capital meet the test of prudent fiscal management? So my key point number seven is, I therefore request that HBRC write to HBRIC and rescind the approval to pay dividends from borrowing because that is actually what that is actually doing is one, paying the current Council unearned income by robbing from future generations, and two, appearing to give HBRIC the approval to operate in the same manner as a Ponzi scheme. The risk of private litigation. Given that the Council could be perceived by some as compromising its ability to enforce environmental standards and regulate effectively, some litigious-minded people out there may take it upon themselves to initiate private prosecutions against those perceived to be liable. So my key point number eight, the Council should make significant provision in the long-term budgets for the inevitable litigation to follow in the wake of the RWSS. I began by stating that I fully understand the RWSS will proceed, and soon, despite numerous sources proving that it is not viable either financially, environmentally, geologically, socially or hydrologically. It will proceed because it's politically expedient. Also, some very powerful people will make a lot of money out of it, 
The ratepayers of Hawke's Bay and those signing the water users agreements will contribute that money. The Council needs to make provision in the long term budgets for the looming off balance sheet costs associated with your direct involvement in the RWSS. As can be now, now be plainly seen from my notes you have been given this evening by being both a promoter and a regulator of the dam, this Council has brought a plague upon its head of monumental proportions. You have compromised a major component of your reason for being. Please do not compound the problem, compound the conflict of interest and magnify the cost to ratepayers any more by becoming a customer of the scheme. Thank you. Seconds apart. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Thank you for your submission and thank you for your presentation and, uh, and additional material. You put a lot of work into this. Um, thank you. Next submitter is uh, Matt Edwards. F and final, you get the, the last go. There you go. <laughs> so that's number 57. Is here somewhere. Oh, yeah. So, Mr. Edwards, uh, welcome. And um, you have 10 minutes, so I'll push the button and we're away. Uh, if you wish us to ask you questions, can you please allow some time in your presentation? But the time's yours to do with what you wish, so welcome. Thank you. So, I have the dubious honour of being the last presenter for the day yeah. on this topic. My submission, which you would have a copy of in front of you, is pretty brief, and I doubt you would have any difficulty in understanding what I'm saying in it. One of the concerns that I have is that you are asking the whole of the ratepayer base in Hawke's Bay to pay for further environmental enhancement. And I don't consider that that is appropriate when I think of a freezing worker in Wairoa, a farmer up the Mohawker, or an old age pensioner couple in Havelock North. If we want to get further environmental benefits out of this scheme, because you consider it's necessary, then I think those who are causing the problems should pay for it, not the whole of the ratepayer base. The whole of the ratepayer base is already contributing 80 million to this scheme. Why are they being asked to contribute almost another 50%? As a person who holds a resource consent, I have to pay for science charges on the basis that the resource consent holders get a 35% benefit out of that work. The rest of the general rate payers pay 65%. And what I'm saying is that I think this situation where you want extra environmental benefits should be treated the same way. The original consent uh, in the, um, for this scheme included the allowance of 4 million cubic metres of flushing water per annum. The Board of Inquiry found that that was adequate. I don't understand why you are proposing to roughly double it at a cost of about a million dollars a year. If you're going to spend that sort of money, why can't it be spent on other mitigation methods? Because it's expensive water to be flushing down a river. So those are my two main reasons for um, preferring absolutely option C on this proposal. I think if the 4 million cubic metres was wrong, then it was wrong right from the beginning and it should have been altered right at the beginning. But the Board of Inquiry found no problem with it. They canvassed that issue quite widely and agreed with it in the end. So I can't see the justification for flushing more water down the river.
There are other ways of mitigating the environmental effects that are occurring from the activities in the catchment. And I do refer there in my submission to some of the work that was done at Lake Brunner, but there are no doubt many other places where similar sort of work has been carried out as well as in this area. And I think that's a more cost effective way of getting the results you want than just simply flushing water down the river forever. We should work on solutions that have a long term future not on expedient ones that will require um, continuation forever. One of the things that concerns me about the way councils have gone, and this is just a general comment, is that the things that are getting proposed at times are very questionable, and I wonder if this isn't because You've no, it's certainly true, I think, of Napier City Council, it may well be true of this council, that you've got rid of the good old engineer. <laughs> there used to be a guy called the city engineer. And he had a handle on the finance, on the technical side and everything that was going and he had a fair bit of say in it. I don't know whether that's still the case but it seems to me not to be the case. <coughs> but I may be wrong in saying that but that's just the impression I have. Because engineers being technical people usually look at the implications fairly carefully and I think you'd have to agree that this overall scheme has been fraught with a lot of problems and I'm wondering if that's because of the lack of your own engineering input into it right from the beginning rather than relying on consultants. I'm thinking of Tarkas Koutsos when I say that. But Clive Squires was the Navy City Council equivalent. Just a point I thought I'd like to make while I'm here. Thank you, that's all I really wish to say. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Mr Edwards. Councillor Barker. I see that you've said that you are firmly opposed to option C, like the overwhelming majority of others. Do you believe that this council should be directed by both? Sorry? Support, support option C. Sorry? Support option C. Correct, 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 correct. Oh, he's sorry. He's firmly in favour. Yeah, I'm firmly in favour. I'm sorry, it's, it's the end of the day. I'm getting the things mixed around. But firmly in favour of option C, and you're in line with all of the other submitters, the majority of them, do you believe this council should uh, follow the will of the submitters in general or what would you think of this council that chose to ignore what the uh, will of submitters were, was? Well, I'd like to think that we live in a democratic society and we have a democratic council. And I don't see that you've got much option but to listen to the majority of your submitters for whatever reasons they have given. And yes, so yes, the answer is yes. I would like to see you, the council, follow the opinion of the majority of your submitters. Otherwise, if you don't, I for one will wonder why I would bother putting submissions in if you don't take any notice. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? did refer to the fact that um, the ratepayers have already contributing 80 million. Is this 80 million is going to get a rate of return? So it's an investment? I'm not quite sure I understand your question. No, well, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure it's within the scope actually, uh, It's Councillor. probably not within the scope, yeah. but it is uh, the fact that the water actually is in addition to the 80 million. And I'm just... Perhaps just reword it that the 80 million is an investment, the other is a um, 
purchase of water for environmental benefits over and above what the scheme users have to provide. So can you see the difference between those two funding? Yes, I, un I understand what, what the council is looking at. And that, that's the point uh, I was... Could I just, excuse me, Mr Chairman, could I listen to the submitter and not to one of the councillors? Sorry. Yes, my understanding is that the $80 million is going towards um, getting this scheme going. I mean, a, a lot of money has been spent in investigations and in litigation and all the rest of it. Um, and design and firming up this scheme. I pr assume what's left out of the 80 million will go into construction if the project proceeds. The, f the roughly 40 million that, that uh, you're proposing to expend over the 35 year period, um, you're saying is for additional environmental benefits. And I do understand the difference between the two uh, amounts of money, but, I'm s but what I'm really saying is that if you want to spend more money on enhancing environmental benefits, then those who are causing the problems that you need, that you need to mitigate and, and get rid of should pay for that cost. I don't necessarily think they should spend 36.9 million, because I think it's beyond the ability of the people who live in the catchment to do that. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. We're, we're out of time. You were lucky last, and uh, thank you for your submission and your um, and your presentation. Uh, we'll be dealing with all these issues tomorrow uh, when the hearing resumes at uh, 11 a.m. at this stage. So thank you very much, and um, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. And I think on the following that uh, we will adjourn the hearing. You've changed it. The, 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 the nine has moved to eleven. Yeah. Can you just explain what you, how you see the day now? How long it would take? Yeah, what, what do you see is happening tomorrow, and some indication timeline? Um, yeah, I'd have to need some help with that probably. But. About indications about times, councillor? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, okay. So nine o'clock um, uh, is a workshop with um, some uh, members of the H Brick Board. Um, eleven o'clock. We will um, uh, reconvene the meeting to begin deliberations, now that you've heard all the submissions. Um, the finish time for that is really totally in your hands. But, but we'll go through until all the, all the submissions, either on block or, or individually, have, have um, uh, council decisions on them. Uh, look, it's pretty straightforward. I suspect the environmental flow discussion will take some time. I couldn't put a time on it. Just one point. I see that we had a in the diary a special meeting set down, which uh, yes got cancelled. Can I just make an observation? That things have been pretty fluid of late. Things have gone in, things have gone out. And the second thing is that there's been no explanation. They just vaporise. I mean, how do you, how do you, how do you, you can't live your life in, in these things, sort of, you know? I just ask you to try and be a bit... Can't live your life forever in this method, anyway. Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> can't live your life forever in this method. Yeah. So. I, just, you don't know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there should have been the explanation. The explanation for the 27th of June being uh, deferred is that there's actually not a lot of... Um, there's plenty of space on the 29th of June agenda, so um, items are being moved to that date. Sure, but it's just nice to know. I, I don't know whether you're going to come back with the next one and say, well, we've just decided to shift it here, we've done it there, or all sort of, yeah. Just helpful to explain it. Exciting times. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. We'll adjourn the meeting um, till 11 tomorrow, I think is the correct terminology. And, um, uh, yes. Yeah, and um, you're welcome to partake in a uh, mineral water on the way out if anyone has the energy. Or the inclination.